Our viewers may not be uh, familiar with the security deal, the secret security deal you mentioned that Prime Minister Sogavari signed with China. Can you tell us a bit about that? So this is um, this is a concern. Before the uh, before the security deal was sort of like constructed, I think the current construction comes out in reverence uh, to the November riots. It, it was because of that event that the uh, you know the government sees is fit. I think there was some conversation that the government had with China to ensure. Uh, that this thing come about. But before that, if you follow closely the public media, especially from from the Chinese embassy, the uh, the ambassador already made, made mention of of Chinese uh, personals coming into the country and would be helping their Chinese nationals. So that that was something mentioned before the security deal was done. So I I suppose the conversation has already been there. Uh, before the security uh, uh, pact was uh, was signed, to have Chinese police come to, to help, help these Chinese companies, like the Chinese people living in the Solomons, is that right? Uh, I, it wasn't clear, but they were saying the Chinese investment. But as far as we know, in the Solomons, there are individual Chinese that have run mostly the retailing and the wholesaling. The Solomons, the only big investment, uh, but shouldn't belong to, to China, it belongs to the Solomons, is the Pacific Games uh, construction of the stadiums and all that. We have not seen any other Chinese investment uh, apart from there are maybe the, their proxies in the logging industry, now in the mining sector. So when they mention investments, uh, it's kind of interest like what investments are you referring to? Uh, so, so, so what the Chinese are uh, uh, fundamentally saying is those Chinese people that are running shops in Honiara and all these things are, are their investments, I suppose. So that's why they bring in these people to to help uh, ensure the investments that belongs to China is protected. If Because it, it, at the moment, you would not see any such major investments apart from those that I've mentioned. The, the, the greatest concern about the security deal is that someday that could result in a Chinese military base in the Solomon Islands. Have you seen any indication that Chinese forces might already be in the region? If you stated Honiara, there is a development that has raised a lot of concern in the western side of, of, of the capital uh, called Mamara Estate. And it is interesting that the public is able to observe that it it is highly likely the security people that are look after that property are Chinese and it seems that they are holding on to arms. That's what the observation that a lot of people have said. Whether that is true or not, these are the kinds of things that you know is out there and people are concerned about. And for for Malita province for and any right thinking Solomon Islander, if you look at the way Sogovare and his government has been has been addressing issues uh, of Solomon Islands, they are quite not honest. You know, the, the things that I've done were, were denied at the first place, and when these uh, documents came, they, they explained it a different way. So why should, why should anyone uh, believe what they are saying now? Because, uh, because their practice has not been an honest one. So, so whilst they were, were seeing the in a song that saying that they they would not allow any Chinese uh, military base in the Solomons, the agreement itself, in, if you look at it, like many commentators have have said, it's very open ended, and some of the terminologies within that agreement, we don't understand or we don't know what these things would would practically mean, and 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 lastly, Solomon Islands in comparison to China, Solomon is a very weak state. Now, if a powerful you know, a uh, country like China would want to see things happen. Uh, it would not be difficult to see that they could able to force their way in uh, as they have done already. Well, so that's a very good point you make. Like, we, we can't trust the Sogavari government. We can't trust China, obviously. Are there many foreign journalists or foreign officials coming to the Solomon Islands and keeping an eye on the situation, seeing if there is moves towards stationing Chinese troops, military equipment on the Solomon Islands? Who's keeping an eye on that? Yeah. 
At the moment, unfortunately, it's not because of the COVID thing. It's the requirements under you know the COVID regulation that you have to apply, and and you know the government would definitely use that uh, you know that uh, that space to uh, filter who they want to come into the country or not. So that is um, that is hard to uh, at the moment. There's not much foreign, uh, I think, foreign uh, media in the Solomons. So so essentially, this is like a black box. It is. It is. Uh, it is a, a space that uh, is not filled. Um, and recently, there was an incident at Parliament where local journalists were trying to take, the, you know, the pictures of uh, the Prime Minister when he arrived, and they were stopped by the police. This is sort of like a new thing as well. It's 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 not like that in the past. The Prime Minister is always there, free for people. He's a public figure. Hmm. But mm-hmm. now things have uh, you know have uh, changed a little bit, and that raised a concern. Uh, by the uh, the media association of Solomon Islands. Is there, you know, there have been photos of uh, Chinese security personnel training uh, Solomon Islands police, right? You know, uh, how to, um, for crowd control, riot control, these kinds of things. Like the Chinese embassy published some of these photos and the way that the Chinese Communist Party controls its own people is quite, you know, severe in terms of both surveillance and, um, you know, how they put down, for example, the protests in Hong Kong, things like that. Is there a concern that they may bring some of those types of techniques to the Solomon Islands and and train Solomon Islands police in that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of crowd control, riot control, things like that? Yeah, definitely. There are people within Solomon Islands, especially from Malita province, where we we are the ones who have voiced our concern in regards to the streets. We, this is this is real for us. This is a real concern that, you know, if there is anything else, what do they have? That's all they have. That's all they have in suppressing people. Do they have other practices that we can rely on or that they'll use this other technique that is it is equal to ours? There's none. So what else do we expect? I think that's that's very clear with a lot of Solomon Islanders, except the supporters of, of the current government within Solomon Islands. But people are really concerned that, you know, given opportunity, given time and given, uh, you know, any any other uh, uh, things that happen in Solomon, especially in terms of violence, because of the issue that mattered to Solomon Islanders has not been addressed. So there is, there is bound to be things happen in the same way because the underlying issues that concerns the people have not been addressed. So if it happens maybe in the future, uh, you know, how would the Chinese react to it? Will they be reacting like what we've seen from the Australians and the New Zealand when they were here? Or will they be employing those tactics that we have seen in Hong Kong? And for us, that's the only tactic they have. They don't have any other tactic to use. So we'll definitely th- those tactics will be ended up in the Solomons. Yeah, that's that's kind of terrifying because we were in Hong Kong uh, in 2019, and we saw exactly what the what the police were doing to suppress. At the beginning, it was protesters, and eventually, it was kind of everybody, including journalists, and they were spraying tear gas at, well, at us and everywhere. Well, in particular, the difference between the 2014 umbrella protests versus the 2019, the police were an entirely different beast, right, and a they, lot of people think it's because they got that kind of training from mainland Chinese security forces. Yeah, so. So that would be a terrifying thing to happen in the Solomon Islands. And I, I know in your uh, your recent op-ed in The Guardian, you, you called the Solomon Islands close to being a failed state. Uh, what, what did you mean by that? I think that reference is made to state apparatus, the belief in the state authority that should protect people and should look after the welfare of the people. And the incidences that I've mentioned, starting from the ethnic crisis to the riots, these are evidence that, you know, the, the powers that are vested on these authorities that are, you know, that are looked after by, by the people in the authority, it seems not to be working. If, it, if they are working, then these things would be somehow addressed. So if you, if you use that as a, as a basis to see things, then we have failed, Solomon Islands have failed in looking after its own affairs. And if you're in the Solomons, you can feel it physically, you know, from, from Honiara to the provinces and right up to the people uh, in the rural areas. 
And then I would add also that the security de deal itself, that's an indication of a failed state. Why should you ask someone else to come and look after your the, the fundamental thing that you should look after? So if you are looking for someone else to look after yourself, it's a reflection of yourself not able to look after you. And Solomon has not been able to look after itself during the tension, the crisis, and even the November riots in terms of the capacity of the state to enforce what is required of it to enforce has not been there. And also the fact that other people, other, you know, people outside of the country are able to come to the, into the country and use opportunities uh, within the government structures to able to facilitate their interest. That for me is also an indication that, you know, states not able to look after itself. Hmm. So where does uh, the Malaita province and Premier Sudani fit into this, challenging this kind of regime? What has happened, uh, the premises that Malaita province uh, was standing on, is when, when Sudani, after, after the uh, other suite, there was a, a communique uh, signed by more or less the elected members of the Assembly of Malaita province outlining their belief in how the develop, how development should be conducted within Malita province, having looked at the history, having looked at the political history as practices by previous leaders, they have developed a principal document that should guide them uh, in, in terms of how to develop themselves, both politically and uh, you know economically and socially. So that's that's where Malita province is is trying to look into and to use that principles that are in the document to advance its uh, interaction, uh, both with uh, the national government and even with the donor families, that this is what, how we see things and this is how we should able to ensure we find a new pathway to develop the place. And at the moment, I, I've had the experience that many of our friends who came to Aoki, uh, the headquarters of Malaysia province, have asked the question of what's even the relationship with the national government uh, and the provincial government, you know, is deteriorating uh, uh, a lot. And and right to what Premier Sweden was saying that, look, if we are to manage a place, there's need for us to talk and to discuss and to look deeper into issues than this accept, uh, you know, what is coming from Honiara that might not be good for our people. But that's what we are doing. We, we try to have a, a mature discussion about the issues that this country has been faced with, especially from Malita, where the bulk of the population is, and most of these things that are happening in Honiara in terms of the riots and in terms of standing up for people's rights, mostly are done or led by, by people from Malita province or organizations that are related to Malita province.